North Korean leader Kim Jong-un renewed his call for a limitless expansion of his military nuclear program to counter U.S.-led threats in comments reported Monday that were his first direct criticism toward Washington since Donald Trump's win in the U.S. presidential election. At a conference with Army officials on Friday, Kim condemned the United States for updating its nuclear deterrence strategies with South Korea and solidifying three-way military cooperation involving Japan which he portrayed as an Asian NATO that was escalating tensions and instability in the region. Kim also criticized the United States over its support of Ukraine against a prolonged Russian invasion. He insisted that Washington and its Western allies were using Ukraine as their shock troops to wage a war against Moscow and expand the scope of U.S. military influence, the North's official Korean Central News Agency said. Kim has prioritized his country's ties to Russia in recent months, embracing the idea of a new Cold War, and displaying a united front in Russian President Vladimir Putin's broader conflicts with the West. He has used Russia's war on Ukraine as a distraction to accelerate the development of his nuclear-armed military, which now has various nuclear-capable systems targeting South Korea and intercontinental ballistic missiles that can potentially reach the U.S. mainland. Kim has yet to directly acknowledge that he has been providing military equipment and troops to Russia to support its war against Ukraine and the KCNA's report didn't mention whether Kim made any comments toward Trump, whose election win has yet to be reported in the North state media. Kim met Trump three times in 2018 and 2019 in Trump's first presidency, but their diplomacy quickly collapsed over disagreements in exchanging the release of U.S.-led sanctions and North Korean steps to wind down its nuclear and missile program. North Korea has since suspended any meaningful talks with Washington and Seoul as Kim ramped up his testing activity, and military demonstrations in the face of what he portrayed as gangster-like U.S. threats. There's concern in Seoul that Kim in exchange for his military support of Russia would receive Russian technology in return to further develop his arsenal. Trump's election win has touched off speculation about a resumption of a summit-driven diplomacy with Kim, which was described by critics as a bromance. But some experts say a quick return to 2018 is highly unlikely, as too much has changed about the regional security situation and broader geopolitics since then. While the North Korean nuclear problem was relatively an independent issue during Trump's first term, it is now connected with broader challenges created by Russia's war on Ukraine and further complicated by weakened sanctions enforcement against Pyongyang, Huang Ildo, a professor at South Korea's National Diplomatic Academy, wrote in a study last week. Sustained rain fell overnight in the Honduran city of San Pedro Sula, with no immediate sign of serious flooding. Tropical Storm Sara was forecast to drop 10 to 20 inches of rain, with up to 30 inches in isolated areas of northern Honduras. The heavy rain could lead to life-threatening flooding and landslides, according to the Miami-based National Hurricane Center. The weather system made landfall late Thursday about 105 miles west-northwest of Cabo Gracias a Dios, on the Honduras-Nicaragua border, the center reported. That is near Brus Laguna, a village of about 13,000 inhabitants. There are few other areas of population nearby. In November 2020, Ada and Iota passed through Honduras after initially making landfall in Nicaragua as powerful category for hurricanes. Northern Honduras caught the worst of the storms with torrential rains that set off flooding that displaced hundreds of thousands. Ada alone was responsible for as much as 30 inches of rain along the northern coast. Sarah moved back out into the Caribbean overnight and by Friday morning was located just south of the island of Roten, a small-scale tourism destination. In its latest update, 
the Hurricane Center said the storm was located about 170 miles southeast of Belize City and was moving west at 2 miles per hour, with maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. Sarah was expected to continue to slow and then possibly strengthen slightly, but remain roughly on that path and threaten Belize's coast over the weekend. El desplazamiento lo va a hacer hacia el noroeste, a este punto, a este punto, pero cuando esté aquí la, eh, y va a impactar a Belice como tormenta tropical, pero ya cuando esté adentro. La zona occidental del país recibiendo algunas cantidades de lluvias entre 15 a 20 milímetros, pero la mayor cantidad de lluvias y precipitaciones que esperamos van a ser en el departamento de Colón, Atlántida y en su medida el departamento de Cortés, hablando cerca de unos... Eh, eh, 20, eh, 20, 30, 40, hasta 50 milímetros aproximadamente. Donde sí hemos tenido condiciones de, eh, eh, de comunidades incomunicadas es entre Colón y Atlántida. Tenemos 74 también personas albergadas en el departamento de Colón y un total de 587 familias afectadas debido a la tormenta tropical Sara, que nos va a seguir dejando lluvias para las próximas 48 horas.